It's time to get sexy, so watch Secular Sexuality Live Thursdays at 7 p.m. Central. Visit tiny.cc slash YTSS and call into the show at 512-991-9242 or connect to the show online at tiny.cc slash call S-E-X. This country is under attack from the liberal media and the gay frogs, and I have supplements that I need to sell to you in order to... <clears throat> ooh, ooh, ah, excuse me. Whew, sorry, uh, a little holdover from uh, the promo earlier. Welcome back to another episode of The Nonprofit, the show where we discuss news and topics of the day from a skeptical humanist pers- uh, perspective. My name is not Alex Jones, although we will be talking about him later. I am Jason Sherwood. And today, we have an awesome, awesome panel. Uh, Starting on my far left over there, uh, we've got August the Atheist. Uh, How are you doing, August? Oh, I'm fantastic. How are you, Jason? Oh, I'm, uh, you know, just trying to, uh, you know, recuperate my throat there a little bit. That's really really hard. (laughs) Uh, next, we got uh, Professor Dr. Rich uh, Firth. God be here. Man, that is, it, does it take like 20 minutes to write your name out? Yeah, um, always. Uh, when I have to sign my name on things, it's basically Firth, because I can't be bothered with the odd be here bit. Uh, <laughs> too long. Excellent, excellent. And uh, last but certainly not least, uh, we've got uh, Helen, not always easy to be green. How are you doing, Helen? I am feeling great. It's spooky season, so it is a wonderful time to be alive. So um, how are you all doing today, Jason? Oh, I'm, I'm doing I'm doing well. I'm doing well. And, uh, you know, since we're all doing good, I also would like to tell you that uh, this show is a product of the Atheist Community of Austin, which is a 501c3 nonprofit organization dedicated to promoting atheism, critical thinking, secular humanism, and the separation of religion and government. And we've got a really packed show for you today. And and as I alluded to earlier, we are going to be talking about how Alex Jones, with all of his many lies and anger, he's going to be forced to pay up here a little bit. Uh, Then we're going to uh, explore a Wyoming ranch that uh, closed due to some abuse allegations. Uh, We are going to have a look back at the Salem witch trials. And then we're going to wrap it all up with uh, the Vatican response to the rise of atheism. Um, I'm going to try not to sing uh, a parody of, you know, do you want to build a straw man on that one? Because it's, uh, well, well, we'll get into that. But as with all of our shows, uh, links for today's topics and the news that we discuss are available in the description down below. Uh, and you can remember that if you want to come into the show prepared, you can check out the nonprofit's Facebook page uh, where every Friday I go ahead and list all the articles ahead of time so that you can be well, well informed. So even though I did my little bad impression of Alex Jones, I'm not actually going to be taking the first segment here. And uh, we're going to go ahead and throw it to Helen. Yeah, so I, I am sorry, but I am so happy about um this judgment coming down. I know there's some complications with it, and but just for this man, get a little bit comeuppance when I was like feeling a little bit, you know, disenchanted with the justice system is very encouraging. And like, it's very funny because I heard about Alex, Alex Jones like years ago, like back in 2011. And he wasn't as crazy. I mean, like he was still doing like conspiracy theories and stuff like that, but it was more of like a novelty, you know? And then 
lo and behold, he went down the crazy train. So, and what I really liked about this particular article, it did focus on not only um, about him having to pay, pay those restitutions to those families, but it also pointed out um, how these thing, how the lies has spread and all those certain things. And I thought that was really important. Um, now, whether Alex pays this money will be remain to be seen as he's filed, he did file for bankruptcy, though his finances are being investigated. And lo and behold, he has been lying about his assets and the actual worth of Infowars and his other companies. Um, and this is going to go into appeal, but still, if it goes into appeal, he's still going to be paying thousands of dollars in legal fees, lawyers, and all those sort of things. And um, I do think that the families that have been victims of these lies and conspiracies that he promoted on his platform and a really horrible thing that he promoted that, you know, um, these deaths of these children were fake and everything like that. Even if these families don't see this money, I'm really hoping they get some kind of closure and peace. So, um, because that's what they really need. Cause I don't think no amount of money will ever replace the loss of a child, but I'm really hoping you know, some kind of justice and some kind of closure comes to those families. And also too, as um, as far as the legal troubles with his family, because there was an, uh, another article as well about what's going on with his family because his wife did take him to court and his children, he's kind of brainwashed his kids into believing in bullshit conspiracies and poisoning their minds and teaching them not to be critical thinkers and create this like little cult with his own kids, you know? And I can't imagine living with a diagnosed narcissist. What a bunch of toxic bullshit that is kind of getting put upon you. And I'm, this is not proven. I'm just throwing out a theory. You know, he hasn't been diagnosed, but he seems very, I've seen him, I've heard him on interviews and seen him on various podcasts. Tends to have a little bit of a drinking problem. That with a narcissistic behavior and um, and his brain going into wild ideas, I can't imagine that's really good for the kids. And I'm glad that his wife has gained custody. I don't, I don't think it's going to be an easy road, um, especially since like her name has been smeared. Um, and you know, his followers don't really care, you know, what the truth is, they just follow him. So I'm very interested where this is going to go down the line, I think definitely. So let's see, how do you guys feel about this? Um, Rich, why don't you go first? Tell me your feelings on Alex Jones. <laughs> Alex Jones, what a curiosity. Yeah, no, definite narcissist. Uh, how much of what he says he believes, I don't know. I do think that that money or at least a fair chunk of it will end up with the families for a few reasons. Firstly, he can't help himself. He will appeal and not turn up and they will, he will lose again. Um, second, lawyers love being paid. They really like being paid and they especially like it when they get a percentage of a huge amount of money. Um, that's, that's, you know, and they're very good at chasing up that money because they like being paid. And also because the punitive damage is yet to come. So uh, he may be a lot more by the end of all this. So a fraction of, oh, and that little thing about his bankruptcy being in a lot of trouble because he's lied and Fulham may have been doing two sets of books and all sorts of other dodgy things. Um, so his bankruptcy might not be the uh, way out he thinks it is. Uh, what may happen is he may lose, well, everything. Uh, the thing about selling his business not being his and then finding out it's his parents that's wonderful um all this kind of stuff makes me full of joy that just occasionally people like this gone bag will get brought down a peg or two by the legal system long may it continue little little comeuppance uh yeah that yeah. that sounds like it would be great uh, august what, what do you think well, first of all, I think this is very, very sweet poetic justice if he actually does end up having to pay the money. And I know, Helen, you mentioned that even if the families don't get the money, at least there's some sort of closure. 
Yeah, I think that's true, but also those families should get the money. Um, but here's the thing, no amount of money in this entire world could replace your child and not only replace your child, but there's no way you can take back the lies that have been spread mm -hmm. and claiming that these grieving parents going through the worst time of their entire life are being called crisis actors by, by this guy who's never had to go through anything like that. And it's already bad enough that their grief has been on display since this tragedy occurred. But then to say that they're faking it and that it's for pu publicity. So I really fucking hope the families get the money and they should. Uh, and I also saw something about the, the, the jurors were saying they wanted the family's attorney fees to be paid as well. Mm. And I'm sitting here like, mm -hmm. isn't that a given? Like, fucking, yeah, they should be. Are you fucking kidding me? Like, I, I can't even believe that that was a thing that had to be uh, recommended. But yeah, I just think it's poetic justice. But the fact that he's calling this, uh, I believe his, his direct quote was, he's facing Goliath. Shut the fuck up. You're not facing Goliath. You lied and you've been lying for years and your platform is built off of lies and you're getting called out on it. And I'm not sorry for you. I have zero empathy for you. I'm so sorry. I like being an empathetic person. I think there's nuance and everything. There's no nuance here. You lied about grieving families. You, die, you lied about dead children. It doesn't get lower than that. Yeah, and... As far as that's concerned, I mean, it, the, the the lies and, you know, what he said live on his show is bad enough. What really kind of made this worse was the true believers, the ones who then followed through on the things that he said. There were people who would then harass the families. There were, there were people who were giving them death threats while they're already trying to bury their children. So it's not just, you know, oh this guy said some mean things and now they're going to get millions and millions of dollars. It's not that it is so much more than that. And this is not the first time that Alex Jones has, has been in trouble. And, and even in this case, this isn't the first settlement that has come out of it. There's actually the first settlement that came out of Austin, Texas, uh, where Alex Jones works out of, uh, wow. Where, where's Austin, Texas? Wow. Well, we'll get to that in a second, but, <laughs> That was a $49 million judgment. Here's the thing on that. It's possible that the Texas uh, judgment will actually come down due to some caps built into law. But mm -hmm. thankfully, in Connecticut, how this was tried and the rules of law that they have there, there are no caps. So that over $900 million is going to stand if he wants to appeal it. He's going to have to put about 10% down, which he may have. He may have that. But as uh, Helen and, and Rich alluded to earlier, is he even going to bother to show up? Because he couldn't show up for discovery. He couldn't show up to really defend himself. He only showed up at the very end where it's like, yeah, by the way, you already lost by default. And we're here to divvy up things. Hmm. Uh, so, uh, Helen, uh, what else do you have to add? Well, I kind of wanted to piggyback, piggyback off of what August was saying, because it's not so much that, as we've been talking about, that he was spreading lies. The people that bought that lie harassed these families. There was one family that had to move six times because these people were stalking their house, demanding that bodies be exhumed to prove that their children had been killed. Like you're already dealing with the trauma hmm. of losing. And as a parent, I can't imagine what that horror is to go through. And then on top of that, you have crazy people showing up at your house, demanding that you prove that your children are dead to prove that they were part of the school shooting because this asshole on the internet was spreading lies, spreading, spreading conspiracies and making up bullshit that we're going to take the left is going to take your guns away and all that crap. And that's the thing that's so disheartening and dis and disconcerting. And he's passing this on to his children. 
and that's and it it just blows my mind that anyone would even as and he's a parent and do that to other parents it's 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 very mm-hmm. sick poison his kids minds uh when only he when he only has visitation rights because oh yeah he lost that case as well yeah <laughs> yeah august what else do you got I'm just trying to kind of keep my cool here. Um, I usually try to keep a smile, but this is something I I can't smile at at all. The only thing I think is remotely funny is that as a Gen Zer, as a Zoomer, as they call us, the first time I heard of Alex Jones, uh, I I heard him from the chemicals in the water are turning the fricking frogs gay. And I thought that was hilarious. But now seeing the rest of the bullshit that's under this, it's not funny anymore. And this kind of shit is ruining people's lives. And I think it is not lost on me that this is the same type of people that are like Marjorie Taylor Greene. Um, I'm sure all of you are getting triggered by me even mentioning her fucked up name. But she herself harassed a Parkland shooting victim because he dared to speak out. So clearly, clearly this is a political agenda. This is, and they always say that the leftists are the one pushing their agendas. And we're just like, hey, maybe you shouldn't gun down kids. And then afterwards, maybe you shouldn't claim that the parents are lying. I'm sure if I asked the audience out here, any of you that are parents, what's your biggest fear relating to your child? Huh? Is it losing your kid? Is it your child, your five-year-old, your six-year-old getting murdered in cold blood? And imagine you're standing outside of the school and there's people having to go to hospitals to identify the body of their dead child because it is so fucked up that it's unrecognizable at this point. And then you have cameras in your face and that's bad enough. And now you have idiots fucking morons on the internet saying that it's a it's a lie it's faked can you imagine if you're a parent if you have a child or if you even have an ounce of empathy for human beings you should know that this is fucking deplorable and that one billion dollars could never make up for the loss and the terror that these families have experienced and honestly i need to throw it over to rich or else i'm gonna lose it (laughs) yeah uh, well said um it's there's another conversation here the fact that he can have these followers who believe him who will go and do this harassing who will uncritically listen to what he's got to say who are so terrified that their guns are going to be taken away uh, at a time when if anything i mean i'm a foreigner but if anything should suggest maybe maybe you'd put some laws about the big ones out there, then maybe it should be kids getting shot up every other week. Just a thought. Um, you know, we don't have uh, school shooting drills here or any metal detectors or anything like that. Um, we worst thing that happens at our school is uh, one of the teacher, one of the uh, supply teachers runs out crying because the te- kids have made her cry. Um, but you know, it's it's weird. And is how do we address? How do we get to people who? fall for this stuff because that's part of the problem as well it's the fool and the fool who follows them if you like um it's a conundrum oh absolutely absolutely Mm -hmm. and and i i agree with you there the fact that we're doing school shooter drills uh, i never had to suffer that uh, even though i was in high school when columbine happened uh i was nowhere near columbine i was uh you know uh but that even after that happened immediately after that happened the idea of doing you know school shooter drills was just not something that that we even thought about and and to piggyback off of what august said you know about the conspiracy theories it's like yeah they they can be fun you know the gay frogs that's funny that's silly you know it's, it's great the the sex ring in the pizza shop was all fun and games until somebody decided that they were going to confront that pizza shop demand to see the basement, which didn't even exist mm. and put a few rounds in. Um, and 
I just wanted to give a, a little bit of a fun fact uh, about Alex Jones, who is friend of the show, kind of. As I said, that Alex Jones runs out of Austin, Texas. He actually got his start at a public access TV station, the exact same TV station that the Atheist Experience came out of. His show premiered right before AXP, uh, which caused you know AXP to have the now famous 430 time slot that it now has. Um, so, and, and 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 they're actually if you go back into the back catalog, there are episodes where Alex Jones has called into the show. Um, but I do kind of want to, um, uh, you know, I'm going to let August uh, have the final word uh, in this uh, particular segment. Man, I'm really trying to not be known as the young, fiery, angry atheist, but I feel like that's the title I am uh, getting. What? And you know what? I only get angry about the topics that are really fucked up, and I think that this definitely applies I think that the fact that his show was called Info Wars, which obviously implies information wars, and I think that name is quite curious. What information is at war here? Seems like it's the truth versus bullshit. And you're on the side of bullshit. So uh, just so we clear that up, it's a war against the truth is what you're really promoting here. It's a war against the truth. I do want to point out as well that in June of 2018, six more families that were involved in the Sandy Hook shooting sued him. And later, one of the fathers of one of the murdered children ended up committing suicide. Mm -hmm. And you know what they did? They said, oh, I'm sorry about that. And by they, I mean Infowars, his attorneys, etc., they said, oh, we're so sorry about your loss. Maybe it was a murder. Are you fucking kidding me? Are you lies, for real? Lies have consequences, uh, real no. world consequences. And they fucking not, better. Yeah. And I, you, you, I, it, it, I am, you I know, am grateful. Again, going back on the. Sorry, Jason. <laughs> um, yeah, going back on to. Uh, uh, again, what August said, you know, crime fighters fight crime, firefighters fight freedom. What do info fighters, info wars fight? What do they actually fight? The truth. They fight the truth. They fight the truth. Uh, Helen, uh, one more, and then I think we do need to move on. Yeah, absolutely. I was just going to say, I am, well, one thing I am grateful for this, the president that this is setting, that if you spread bullshit there can be some huge consequences for you i mean this led to direct harm of these families but i'm hoping somebody is gonna take some pause before they start spreading things that would hurt other people and that was the last piece i wanted to say well said well said as uh, other things that are well said uh, typically not by me, but I want to thank all of our viewers, our veteran viewers, our new viewers for getting us over 11,000 subscribers. Uh, so if you're watching us now and you haven't subscribed yet, um, why don't you, why don't you get on that? Cause there's a lot of good stuff going on here. Uh, once you've subscribed, of course, click that like button, ring that bell. So you always know when a new nonprofits, uh, content comes out. Uh, obviously, we got the show that comes out every Sunday at 3 p.m. Central. Uh, but we also have clips of the different segments that come out. And you definitely want to know uh, when those come out as well. And then, you know, go ahead and share that link to our channel, uh, to your friends, your family members, co-workers, uh, the neighbor guy you like, the neighbor guy you don't like, you know, the one that uh, is still watching InfoWars unironically. Um, anyone and everyone. So let's get the word out there so that we can, you know, really help with these fundraisers. Also, are you aware that the Atheist Community of Austin has another YouTube channel? 
go ahead and check out the Atheist Experience Network, a channel where you can find all the atheist shows in podcast form uh, in case you don't want to see uh, our beautiful faces. It's a channel where you can find uh, all of our shows, the secular sexuality, the nonprofits, of course, and the flagship show of the ACA, AXP, uh, Talk Heathen, Truth Wanted. Uh, you can even find some of our older shows that uh, you know are not currently in production, but uh, there's some really good stuff in there as well. Uh, you know, definitely subscribe to that so you do not miss a single episode. All right, so next uh, we're going to talk about a Wyoming ranch. Uh, it's actually a, a ranch for troubled teens. That, well, August, why don't you uh, why don't you take us out? Gladly. So our second article comes from NBC News that was written on October 6th of this year. And like Jason said, it is a camp for troubled teens to help them overcome and cope with their challenges, a.k.a. what all teens go through, which is a rebellious phase of sorts. And some are more challenged than others, I suppose. But all in all, it's not that bad. Um, you know, teens can't be that bad. But these camps are located in very rural areas, such as Wyoming. I've heard of a few in Nevada, um, Nevada, if you will. And the one we're specifically talking about in this article is called Trinity Teen Solutions. It was opened in 2002, but curiously and abruptly shut down when there was allegations against manual labor, specifically heavy manual labor that these teenagers, which when I say teenagers, I mean 13 to 18 year olds. These are middle school, high school students, and they are forced to do manual labor. So very interestingly, um, this, this Trinity Teen Solutions shut down and their founder and owner, Angie Woodward, refused to comment. Hmm. Interesting. But you know what? When I think of, you know, what's the best thing to do for teenagers that are having a difficult time and, you know, having normal teen problems like maybe experimenting with drugs and sex, et cetera, you know, maybe you should kidnap them in the middle of the night with multiple different strangers. And then while they're being dragged and restrained out of their own home at two o'clock in the morning, just tell them you love them and then it'll all be better. And then they'll be dragged out to a van where they will then be transported to an unknown, unknown location and they have no idea what's going on. You know, I think that would help the teenagers that are struggling. And then once they get to the unknown uh, location that you're forcing them to go to, you're legally kidnapping them. You force them to hike through rugged terrain in the heat for days. You force them to do intense manual labor and you punish them in humiliating and borderline abusive ways that separate them from the rest of the world, all they know and love. They have no contact with their friends or people they know from school. Basically, all they have is limited connection to their parents, which are the people who signed them up for this in the first place to help them. And this isn't the only camp. So, yay, this one got shut down for now. But there are multiple others, such as Blue Fire Wilderness and Triangle Cross Ranch. So I want to go ahead and throw this to Helen. So um, I have to admit that I didn't give a lot of um, thoughts to these camps before um, until Paris Hilton actually talked about her own traumatizing experiences of being forced into one of these troubled kids camps, you know, and even as an adult, she is still dealing with the results and the trauma that she experienced at these camps. And I really admire her for coming forth and talking about these things because we tend to think about this as like well parents you know they can't handle their kids and they're busy or whatever and they throw them to what they think is going to correct their child and when they get back they will be a normal functioning teen that isn't going to cause problems now as someone that's raised two children 
it's not easy raising kids. Um, there's no guidebook. We don't really know what to do. And I think that for, you know, those of us, um, those of us that are on the secular side, we, we tend to want to find a way to like push through it. And especially if we really care, but there are plenty of religious people that want the church to raise their kids to give them, you know, some kind of moral guidance and stuff like that. And when that doesn't work, because they don't have the parental education, they don't believe in good mental health, um, family therapy, not getting support from other parents, um, friends, you know, a structure to help them raise their child instead of, and if the church isn't doing it, let's throw them into a camp. Let's do it that way. And maybe by doing that intense um, manual labor and, and what up, it, that rebellion will be sunk down of them. And I found it also really funny that like not funny, haha funny, but like they tied one of the girls to a goat. Now, one, I want to know what the goat did. <laughs> and two, and I'm laughing because it's just beyond ridiculous and horrible. But like, what was, what is the point of that punishment? What lesson is that girl supposed to learn? And what, what do you expect to see from your child when they get back? What kind of correction do you see in your child? And that's the thing that's very disheartening and frustrating. So Jason, what do you think about of all this? Well, the first thing I think is, is you probably shouldn't steal my notes <laughs> because I, I did oh, put I in, my in, in my notes, you know, what could, <clears throat> well, no, no, no. I, yeah, you, I, I did put exactly, uh, you know, what could someone do uh, to be tied to a goat, but also conversely, uh, what did the goat do to be tied to a woman? So, you know, I guess great minds think alike, but I'm going to still say you stole my notes. Um, <laughs> now I do want to get, I, I do want to give some little clarification here, uh, because the camp isn't official. I mean, it's, it's still licensed by the state of Wyoming to run and operate. And the camp due to the ongoing investigations decided that they were going to not take any more clients. So, the one thing on, on this particular article is that it was a little bit light in detail. Uh, I think that uh, uh, August did provide a lot more uh, detail, which um, I, I definitely want to uh, get back to you on that one. Um, but I, I do want to say that that while the allegations are absolutely horrendous and while I'm willing to take these women's uh, accusations uh, you know, on face value and, and say that, you know, it, it definitely needs to be investigated, that the, the camp itself hasn't been fully shut down, hasn't been, you know, taken down yet. Uh, because Thank you for that clarification. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's, it's possible, not likely, especially given the, the, the amount of investigations and the seriousness of this, that, you know, this, this work, camp and all that was designed to be okay i'm not quite buying that just you know based upon some of the other supplementary information that i that i saw but uh rich uh what what do you make uh, what what kind of of sick camps do you guys got over there in britain <laughs> we don't do that kind of thing um don't? yeah we, oh we, man we, we, we do scout camps which usually involves making dens out in the woods and uh, uh, quite a lot of the male scouts discovering their own sexuality while it happens, to be honest. Um, but yeah, just not to get ahead of myself, but one of the most famous depictions of a witch in history is by Albrecht Dürer and it's called Witch Riding Backwards on a Goat. So whether there's any religious symbolism there, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Um, it is alarming to me there is such a thing as work therapy where you voluntarily go somewhere of your own volition because you want to and you work and you do a job well done and it gives you a sense of self-esteem and it helps you out of a rut and it can get you uh, 
going it can help you work through mental health problems and that's great and you have to have skilled counselors who know what they're doing and set a course and don't just tie people to goats and make people do manual labor as they see fit um which is not what's happening here clearly um there's also the added thing that a teenage brain tends to be the areas of the brain, uh, like the limbic system and the amygdala and all these bits associated with emotions, develops a little bit quicker than your, your, if you like, your reason centers, your, your white matter. And so teenagers act out because they feel first and think second. Uh, that's just the way we are. We all work. We've, we've all been there. We've all done it. Every single one of us. None of us didn't have that moment. And I find it odd that this is being medicalized. They are medicalizing teenagers and say, no, you're an ordinary teenager and you're acting out. So let's send you off to this camp who doesn't know what it's doing and is going to, frankly, abuse you because bad counseling is abuse, in my view. Um, it's awful. It's really awful. And it really, really it upsets me uh, what's going on. And I hope they don't get the license back because I don't know they got a license in the first place. I mean, August? Do you know why? No, I really don't. Uh, I can't say I'm surprised, though. It seems like a trend that we always find the absolute worst ways to cure normal issues that people have. You know, why why focus on psychiatric care when you can just apparently tie people to goats and force them to hike through deserts and hot terrain for an extended period of time. There are a few things I want to mention here and they are going to increasingly escalate. So buckle up. Uh, so the fact that the place itself is called Trinity Teen Solutions. Okay, Jason, thank you for making me smile because I was getting a little too serious here. <laughs> but no, uh, the Trinity Teen Solutions, they're not even trying to hide the religiosity here. They're not even trying to hide that there's some sort of religious aspect here, which, of course, again, I'm not shocked. I'm sure Dr. Rich is shocked and I'm sure everybody else is, but I'm not. So that's that's definitely something that needs to be addressed. And I also think that, you know, uh, unfortunately, I, I thought that they had shut it down. I thought there was maybe some hope left, but uh, Jason is telling me otherwise. And so I've lost everything that I had uh, previously given any kind of um, credit to. One thing I will say, though is this is much more escalated than I think a lot of people realize. The U.S. Government Accountability Office has produced a report, and this report is 38 pages long, and its title is Residential Treatment Programs, Concerns Regarding Abuse and Death in Certain Programs for Troubled Youth. How is that even a sentence? How, how is that possible? that there can be deaths and not just a couple because, you know, sometimes weird things happen. No, these are 86 reported deaths since the year 2000, 86 deaths. And again, those are the reported ones. And you got to think that maybe some of them might not be reported because of covering it up or giving it a different name, you know, saying, well, they had some sort of medical issue, et cetera. No. The most common, if you scroll through the 38 pages, again, 38 pages of the report here, a lot of the causes of death are just completely avoidable and unexplainable and unacceptable. This includes dehydration, internal bleeding, hyperthermia, not hypo, hyper, as in they're getting overheated to the point of heat, broken death, and severed arteries. Severed arteries, huh? I wonder why. You know, you don't really hear about people dying of severed arteries. You know why? Because most people aren't in the middle of butt fuck nowhere where they can't get to a hospital in time to, you know, cover up said severed artery. Just a thought. Um, there was massive head trauma, and the one that pisses me off the most suicide. And if you listen to the stories of the survivors, they will tell you how many attempts there were. But in the middle of nowhere, I guess you can protest until you starve to death or just refuse to drink. I mean, you know, how far are you going to protest this? 
you know you'll probably get out eventually, but some of these things are completely how, – how do you die from dehydration? You're not giving them water. That's that's how that happens. You're not giving them fucking water. Why are you not giving them water? Why are they hiking through the fucking desert for days without water? This is I, – I don't understand how anyone could see that – this isn't abuse and the fact that it's even legal. This is on the same level to me as uh, homosexual conversion therapy. It doesn't work. You know, as, as Dr. Rich said, you, these people have some sort of trauma. They maybe have a, a chemical imbalance in their brain. They're young people. A lot of the times people go through rebellious phases in their teens. And honestly, that's when they need to get it out of their system. And I understand if the kid's getting violent or doing massive hard drugs, I get that as a parent, you want to do what's best for them. And maybe these parents do think they're doing what's best for the kid. But what they need is probably medication to fix a chemical imbalance. They definitely need some sort of talk therapy. They need to be taken to a place where they feel safe. This is the opposite of all of that. And then kids are dying because of it. These are 13-year-olds dying of dehydration in the middle of nowhere. So I just want to make that clear that, you know, when I was telling people about this, they were like, oh, it's like Girl Scouts. Nope, not Boy Scouts, not Girl Scouts, none of that, which we know there's problems with that as well. This is being forced this is not a choice. This is manipulation. This is child abuse. And the fact that it was ever legal is ridiculous. But someone else take it here. <laughs> Jason. Mike. Oh. Yeah, so there's I, I, I want to touch on on the dehydration aspect. Uh, really quickly, because uh, that is something that is a really, really big issue in the military. Okay, the military had a rash of deaths uh, a number of years ago due to dehydration because they thought, oh, well, we'll just work these recruits harder and harder, and that's how you train them to become, you know, killing machines or you know, good obedient sailors, soldiers, marines, what have you, and when they realize that no you're actually causing so much incredible harm not just to the mental aspect of it but to the physical aspect uh, of of these uh, service members let me tell you hydration is a huge thing in the military and that's all the way back in 2006 so if you know, you can't fit if the military could figure that out in 2006 and, and probably a little bit before that. Uh, this camp, these camps, because I'm sure that they're not the only ones that are doing the same things, they can learn that as well. Um, so, uh, Rich, uh, I'm going to give you the last word on this one, and then I think we're going to go uh, move on to the next segment. Yeah, um, the deaths and things, that's appalling. Absolutely appalling. There's no justification for it at all. Um, the few camps I know of around here, they have uh, medical facilities on site. They have first aiders. They have people trained in advanced first aid, that sort of thing. So things like a severed artery wouldn't, unless it was a severe thing, wouldn't kill somebody. Uh, on one of the, because they know what to do. They put pressure on it. They they even often know how to stitch the thing up and all that kind of stuff while they wait for the ambulance. Um, it's just, I don't understand this idea of trying to bully kids into behaving as you want them to. Um, I kind of do understand. They understand it more than I'd like to, but it's not going to work. Like you say, it isn't a way to get a kid to behave. And if that's a teenager who is a well-balanced, ordinary teenager going through a bit of a rebellious phase like everybody does. If it's somebody who has ADHD or some other developmental issue or somebody who's on the spectrum, this is close to a death sentence for some of them. It's not good at all. Um they need counseling. They say they need talk therapy. They need help. They need counseling. They need perhaps medication. Uh, they don't need s sticking in the middle of the desert, making to do work. And these people need to know that the film Holes is not a instruction movie. It's 
oh yeah it's there's it's ridiculous i just find it flabbergasting yeah no it it really is uh amazing that this is that this is allowed to continue um and hopefully this will be something that that we can really get the investigation going and shut this one down and any of the others that may be doing it but you know this is this is a very heavy conversation i think we need to we need to take a little bit of a break <laughs> catch our breaths here and uh you know what if you didn't tune into the other aca shows this week here's what you missed <laughs> Certainly there are divided families, you know, yeah. Christ said that he was going to do that. Hey. So, you know, <laughs> is that a fulfilled prophecy? I suppose so, right? <laughs> Just look to the trees, Aaron. I want to believe in the ice wall, baby. I want to go see the ice wall. Be, give me a, get, book me a first class trip to the ice wall. I'll pay whatever I got. Where the f did we get our penguins and bring me the ice? Um, the Lord turned me from my wretched ways and I'm forgiven. And it's like, Wow, that's so nice. So you can still do whatever you want, which it's funny that they claim that atheists are only atheists because we just want to sin and we want to do whatever we want when they do the same shit. I hear you talk about it, and it's like it's an embarrassment to us Christians that we've had slavery in the Bible. Well, it should be, um, yeah. I think the not. ownership of other people is should be an embarrassing thing, yeah. God is not uh, anti-slavery. He's a proponent of slavery. Why aren't you embarrassed by that? Well, the difference between you and me is I am a researcher. You are not. Oh! Mm! You're the researcher? Ben, look, Shannon, Ben Dan's a researcher. We're just a couple of <laughs> uh, who don't know anything. So that's why I'm asking you, Ben Dan. I'm looking what? at degree, my degree, like what a waste what? of money. And we are back. And, you know, it has been a long, long two years or so since we have been able to congregate together. But based upon the updates from the CDC and other scientific organizations, we are going to be able to ease back to doing live shows from the th free thought free. Wow. From the free thought library. And the next studio broadcast will be on Sunday, October 30th, 2022. Uh, both Talk Heathen and the Atheist Experience will be broadcasting at their normal times, 1 p.m. and 4 p.m. respectively. Um, and now you can be part of the studio audience. Uh, so start planning now to get the whole family into the station wagon and schlep on down to the Austin, Texas to meet uh, and greet your fellow non-believers, show hosts, and people who make the magic possible. Uh, the crew, the doors of the uh, library will open at 12 noon to the public. Uh, so we hope to see you there. Uh, if you can't make it there in October, uh, we will continue to broadcast from the library the last Sunday of each month. Uh, so keep watching our website, the atheist community, uh, I'm sorry, atheist-community.org. For news and information as we expand our in-studio offerings in the near future. Um, also, uh, which isn't has been in my show notes, but we'll go ahead and ignore that little aspect. Uh, it's not just going to be those two shows on Sunday. It's actually going to be the entire week. Uh, Secular Sexuality and Truth Wanted uh, will be recording or will be broadcasting live from the Freedom Thought Library. And for that, uh, doors are going to open at, uh, I believe, 6 p.m. Uh, Central. And, uh, yeah, we look forward to everyone, you know, coming in and, and checking out the shows. All right. So let's move on to our next segment. And uh, we're going to be revisiting the Salem Witch Trials in a Looking Back. Looking Back. My shirt says future. I should have worn the other one. Okay, people, I want you to imagine it's 1692. You live in a world where septicemia kills almost everybody, and 
you found out a few hundred years earlier that Aristotle and the Bible didn't know anything about this whacking great continent on the other side of the world. So maybe they're not entirely right about everything. There have been constant religious wars. Almost everybody knows somebody who died in them. Um, there has been famine, disease, plagues, locusts, um, rodents of unusual sizes, all sorts of horrible things going on in the world. And you are part of a belief system that absolutely believes the end of the world is coming, the devil is coming, and he is bringing his henchmen with him. You live in Salem, and a young girl starts to act very strangely. Very strangely indeed. So strangely, you start to suspect she might be a witch. So what do you do? Well, what they did in Salem is they had a mass panic, started accusing each other of being witches, and killed quite a lot of people. Um, and this happened all over Europe as well, in the witch crazes. And it was a terrible time all round. Um, and recently, if you're in New York, Anna Danziger Halperin uh, is the uh, director of the Center for Women's History at the New York Historical Society, is putting on a... Um, I was going to call it show, but that's not really the right word. She's putting on an event called Salem Witch Trials Reckoning and Reclaiming. And the part of the appeal of this to me is the reclaiming bit, because people forget that in most witch trials, particularly Salem, because we know, there are people of colour who were killed um, as witches, often many of them, often not even mentioned in the historical record. We just get whispers of them here and there and have to dig them out. Um, and I find it a really interesting idea to explore it in that way. There's been a lot of work done on the gender of the witch trials because obviously it was a huge act of patriarchal misogyny, but not so much on this other element of the people of color, of race. Um, so I think it's fascinating. The witch trials themselves were one of the low points of history, one of the points where believing things went really badly. But I'm going to talk about witch trials in another era of history soon. But before that, I'm going to pass it to Jason to see what he thinks about this wonderful new exhibit. That's the word I was looking for. <laughs> we we all know a little bit about the Salem witch trials. Because we watch TV and we watch movies and we laugh about it. We laugh about it at the Treehouse of Terror when the Simpsons uh, tackled it. We laugh about it in Monty Python where they found a witch and asked if they can burn her. You know, it's, it's, it's all good fun, right? It's all laughs. And, and it's not because, yeah, people died for no reason. They died because of absolutely no evidence. And we still have people using these witch trials as a, you know, a stand in for, Hey, people don't like us. Mm -hmm. And what I really mean by that is, you know, going back to friend of the show, Alex Jones, Oh, you know, there, there's a witch trial. The liberal media wants to get at him, but witch trials back in Salem had, no evidence. It was pretty much, hey, I don't like you, so therefore you need to be put onto the stake and burned, or we're going to test you to death, things like that. Uh, the rest of this other stuff that, that you see in the media, that you see in, in politics, it's like, no, there is a massive, absolutely insane preponderance of evidence that you did these things. So it's not, a, a, don't try to rewrite rewrite history uh and say that no no this is this is exactly it's it's exactly the same thing i said these things it's recorded therefore it's a witch trial it makes absolutely no sense and i do kind of wish that you know i mean i love monty python and the holy grail i love that scene but i do wish that we can move past and and realize that our history was bad. We were doing it for Christopher Columbus. We're doing it for a lot of our historical figures that do not meet the mythology. Uh, but August, what do you, what do you got? Well, first of all, Jason, I'm a little pissed because I wanted to bring up Monty Python. Damn it. But you know, you did it during right. the sound check. So therefore I get this one. Dang it. Uh, I need to watch that next time. Um, 
But one thing I do want to touch on that you mentioned, Jason, is the the testing. And one ridiculous test that I'm sure all of you know of is the drowning test. So if they put the alleged witch in a body of water and she drowned, oh, she's innocent. Look, she can't swim, blah, blah, blah. Okay. But then if she came back up for some reason and lived, they were like, mm, she's a witch. And they would go and burn her at the stake. I'm like, okay, so you're dead either way. Like, in what way? I... <sighs> In what way does that prove you're a witch? I mean, it's funny now because it's hundreds of years later, whatever, but that's, it comes to a fundamental lack of critical thinking. And it's, you know, this was long ago, but this is kind of the same shit that we see today of people just not critical, critically thinking. And just literally all it took for you to get accused is, hey, this, this young lady is acting weird and she said you did it. Therefore, we're going to hang you. Like, what? Like, how do you prove you're not? It's like a, a guilty until proven innocent, which is obviously bullshit. So I don't know. The whole thing is ridiculous. I think it has been made fun of because, again, like I said, it was long ago. But it's just... Um, I don't know. I, I don't think we've we've gotten better, but not by much. Not by much. But uh, I want to go to Helen now. What do you think? Well, I grew up an hour from Salem, um, and I grew up in New England. And this is baked into New England culture. We it was a good part of our education, a part of our history education, a part of our literature education. Um, and I've been to Salem. I've been to the graves of these people. I saw the place that they were hanged. I, there's a museum there that goes through the history. And on the flip side of it, there's a bunch of new age witchy shops. There are cop cars with witches on them. And I think there's a little bit of psychological distance people want to have from this because it is absolutely disgusting what we did. And 20 people died for no reason other than the fact that somebody didn't like them. There was little girls who were probably not getting a lot of attention, who were bored, and they start pretending that they can see spirits and start accusing their neighbors of being witches, and they're finally getting attention. They're finally getting some, a little bit of recognition because keep in mind, they're girls and they're young. Nobody's paying attention to them, and suddenly the whole town thinks that you have special powers and you're able to see the truth. And it, and also like people were accused of being a witch just because somebody wanted their property or, you know, um, you were the healer in, in the town and suddenly a cow got sick instead of just the cow getting sick. It, they will say that you cursed my cow and it died. And then my husband cheated on me. Therefore you are a witch, whatever, bullshit that they could make up and it's very frustrating to me since i really grew up in this culture and it is baked into the soil in new england that when when i hear flipping things about witch hunts when i hear it's it's made very light it it does make it a little bit more palatable but when you really understand the psychological and historical underpinnings that led to these things that people actually being harmed and you see it again happening, it it's very troublesome because this was a this is something we should be learning from. And it seems again, we don't mm -hmm. tend to take history very seriously the more distance we have away from it. And we are now learning those lessons that to be to think critically, to take a moment and go, but you know what? Is this something I should really be following? Is this something that or is I'm just following the crowd? You know, and 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 I think it again, I will say this. You gotta take pause, man. You gotta like reevaluate, you gotta think about where those consequences are going to go. So, Rich. What do you think, man, <laughs> about this wonderful article that you oh, read? I could, I, <laughs> I could talk about witchcraft forever. I, I, I literally have written about it and studied it and published papers on it and things. Um, so uh, 
How long is this episode again? Five hours? Um, yeah, no. not so much. Not so much. <laughs> <laughs> well, first thing I wanted to try and get is it, we have to, in order to try and understand it as best you can, you have to get into a belief, get into the belief system of the people at the time. There's a wonderful book by a guy called Stuart Clark called Thinking with Demons. It's a monster of a book. It's like this thick, fantastic book. Um, and it gets into the heads of people back then in the 15th and 16th centuries and how they, it's called Thinking with Demons because they did. They believed demons existed. They believed they were absolutely real as real as we believe atoms are real. You know, they, they were everywhere and they were the real things. So when somebody said that person is a witch, it wasn't a, just an accusation. It was a fear that somebody could be a witch, somebody could be harmed because they thought they were real. And it's it's bad thinking, it's bad knowledge, and it's before things started to change and the Enlightenment came along and the idea, and secularization came along and so on. Um, and so that's the kind of thinking that causes this, this idea of there really being demons, there really being a supernatural at work. And the frightening thing is, without going into detail about what happened then, it's happening now. Since the year 2000, there have been more people accused of witchcraft and put to death than there were in the entire period of the witch crazes in the 15th and 16th century, in places like Papua New Guinea, in places like Africa, in places where there can be superstition can be drilled into people, belief in these things can be drilled into people. And what really breaks my heart is it's not women anymore. It's kids. It's young kids who look wrong, who are twins, who are albino, who behave in the wrong way. Um, thankfully, in these parts of the world, parts of Africa, parts of Papua New Guinea and so on, there are sceptics who go out there and rescue these kids and try to educate people. So if I have one appeal to the people watching this, people of the ACA, please help people in places like this who need our help, who are our brethren and our sister, sisters, sororities, and get support them because they you have no idea what these people are facing what they have to try to do day in day out to keep people alive because of frustrating superstitions that consume their villages and their towns and fear of what might happen if they don't kill this poor kid who just happens to be an albino and they think if they have a bit of his body they'll be able to ingest it and become powerful or something like that um yeah, witchcraft is a very important thing to study, I think, because it's happening now, to understand the facts. The old saying of um, people who study don't study history are doomed to repeat it. People who do study history are doomed to sit around while everyone else repeats it. Um, it's kind of true. So, yeah, witchcraft. And people who say things, shrivel things or witch trials make me really angry. If you want to see me getting furious, you'll say, oh, don't sue me for saying these children are actors. Um, it's a witch trial. I'm like, so they're going to burn you at the end of it, are they? They're going to torture you for days. They're going to make you say that you really did do it because you really want to be strangled before they set fire to you. Is that what's coming to you? Or are you just going to be poorer? It just gets me annoyed. Sorry. No worries. No worries. <laughs> you know, that, it, and you're absolutely right. It, it should infuriate people that our history is not great now we have done some great things in our history we have also done some absolutely abhorrent things and the trick is is to you know take the good with the bad so that you always strive to be better and remember where you came from so you never ever go back to those things again so that we don't have the Salem witch trial, so that we don't have the crusades, so we don't have the slave trade. We're, we, you know, when, when we're also trying to basically say, oh, no, the slave trade didn't happen. It was just people trying to do work for other people. It's like, no, you, dressing it up as something it isn't doesn't make things better. It makes things worse. Mm -hmm. <sighs> but anyway... <laughs> I think I think it's it's time that we we move on to our last segment. But before we do that, uh, you can actually become a member of the channel 
for as little as 99 cents a month. Uh, click the join button down below in the video. This will give you access to special chat emojis. Uh, we actually do need to update ours at some point, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get there. Uh, I also want to say that we have a brand new store. And I always love mentioning that because I got to mention the reboot of it and, and look at that amazing shirt. I'm actually wearing that particular shirt. It just came in and it, it really does look so much better in person. The whole spooky Pastor Bob that we got there. Uh, get your favorite items like TV, uh, T-shirts, hoodies, coffee mugs. Uh, check out our new items like beanies, phone cases, tote bags. Um, and every month, just like I said, you know, I've got the special shirt. Uh, but all the shows do a limited edition for every month. So be sure to check out our store for all the NP merch and merch for the other shows as well. All right. So. For our final segment tonight, uh, well, actually this afternoon, because that's when it's going to broadcast it's tonight for us. <laughs> We're going to talk about Vatican II, the electric boogaloo. No, no. <laughs> Basically, this is a story that uh, is kind of the handbook of modern Catholicism. And there's a lot of straw men in there about atheism. Uh, but this particular uh, article comes uh, from uh, Stephen uh, Bullivant. Wow. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and it came out on October 13th uh, of this year. And again, I'm not going to sing a parody of Do You Want to Build a Straw Man? Uh, mostly because it would sound terrible and we would probably get in trouble if we did that. But... Looking through this and, and looking through uh, what the Vatican II was, uh, had written, it seems like that is the modern apologetics that we are seeing uh, on every show. Uh, you know, and, and you jump down to the comments and, um, well, 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 we'll get to that in a moment, but... Um, the, the the problem is is that th they made a lot of assumptions about atheism and in conjunction with communism because when it came out in the 60s what did we have we had the big red scare everything was communism and atheism was under misunderstood so they've got to be paired up and I do know some atheists who, would call themselves communism, but they still do try to find better jobs to, you know, support themselves and their families. So uh, th these kind of scare tactics, it, it doesn't really hold water. But uh, let's go with uh, Helen. What do you think? I just see this as like Catholics, leaders in the Catholic Church shaking in their funny hats <laughs> because. We're moving into a more secular age. We're get, and as someone that grew up Catholic, one thing, science is not shamed in the Catholic Church. You can learn science. They have their own science division at the church. <laughs> so if you include that, plus with um, ready access to information, um, people moving beyond these old ways of thinking, and as that moves forward people are like you know what i don't want to be part of this this group anymore especially like for me my nail and coffee moment was the sexual abuse scandal i'm sorry i don't want to be a part of a crowd that abuses kids so as they're moving forward people are leaving the church because they hear about the abuse scandals and they become more science educated. They become more skeptical. They might not become atheists. They might be a spiritual person, you know, whatever that means, you know, but they don't want to be a part of a religion. And the straw man arguments, as you pointed out, Jason, that was in this article, it's just them basically crying wolf, you know, um, and being, afraid because not new people are joining the flock though i think it's a false fear because there's still billions of catholics in the world that are still giving them donations and going to service and all that type of stuff so 
you know, I understand, like, I would be t t worried too if I was losing my money train. <laughs> but at the same time, the reason why they're afraid of atheists and the rise of it and this idea of rise of secularism and tying it to the Red Scare, tying it to those old fears, because at that time when people were afraid of the Red Scare and communism and all that type of stuff, they turned to the church and they want people to do it again. But we're not playing, we're, it's not, we're not playing the same game anymore. We're not, this is not the same pony show. And I think that's what happens with progress. And you can go online now and look up criticisms and research and all these different things about the church and people don't want to join. The only way really, they don't really get new people. You're born into it because your family follows it. And it's hard to get new members when we're moving to a more secular society. Richard, what do you kind of think about this? <laughs> oh, I think it's part of me wants to laugh at it. Um, it's the Catholic Church has this habit of reinventing itself every couple of hundred years because it has to. And coming up with the, the new Catholic, um, you know, the Catholic Reformation after they had their intellectual and physical asses kicked uh, in the 16th 17th century and various other things that kept happening um i also love i love reading the article there's this line where they're saying that during this how we should how should we deal with these creeping secularism and these atheists um describing atheists one polish bishop describing atheists as enemy of reason science the human person and revelation well one out of four is not bad um it's just <laughs> Uh, it's it's hilarious. I mean, the idea that when you read something like this article, if anyone goes down the bottom and wants to read it, um, the idea that creeping secularization is some kind of bad thing that needs to be resisted is almost completely alien to me. It's completely backwards. It just all feels backwards. It's like, no, no, no. It's a good thing. It's let's let's keep on creeping. In fact, let's go from a creep to a bit of a stride, shall we? Let's secularise in a bit of a stride. That'd be nice. And whether they like it or not, it's happening. People are leaving all churches, pretty much, except maybe Islam. All religions seem to be losing adherence. People within those religions seem to be increasingly um, secular versions of the people within them. So they'll maybe be nominally Christian or in some places nominally Islam or nominally Jewish, but actually they act as if they're a secular person who doesn't believe. And it's happening. And they can throw all the straw man they want at us and they can be worried about it all they want. Hard luck. Huh? Hard luck, you know. To so. be clear, to be clear, people are also leaving Islam now, not at the mm. numbers that we're seeing in, you know, the Catholic Church and the Christian, uh, you know, uh, churches and, and a lot of the other religions. But uh, th there are people who are leaving. There are people who are leaving all different faiths. Yeah. So whether it's an Eastern, whether it's a Western, doesn't matter. Uh, but Augusta, what have you got? Well, I first want to point out that I had to keep reading and rereading the same sentence in this article because it was just a bunch of word vomit to me. But <laughs> eventually I got through it. Um, it was just heavy, man. I was like, this article could not be less, less entertaining if it tried. It, it was boring as hell. But, you know, despite the lack of uh, creative writing here, I think that the fact that they said that the rise of atheism is among the most serious problems of this age. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm very I'm okay concerned. with that. <laughs> so concerned. <laughs> I'm okay with I, that. I, I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm personally, I'm good. <laughs> right. I, I, I read this and I was like, Hmm. Global warming, rise of homelessness, clean water insecurity, human trafficking, slavery still existing in the world. Nah, a lack of belief in God due to you and your followers of your faith not having good enough evidence to convince anyone with half an ounce of skepticism of your bullshit claims is the, is the problem? 
That's that's the problem here. Right. Give me a break. Come on, man. Look, Sky really? got it's your fault. It's your fault that this is rising and you're just going you're just pointing at yourselves like that Spider-Man meme. It's it's you. You're the problem. You are the drama. That's that's what's going on here. Sky that is Sky Day is still got to get paid. So, you know, that that that's that's why it's the biggest problem. <laughs> right. Yeah. Rich, yeah. what else you got? Well, I'm just thinking that, yeah, the thing about it being boring to read uh, reminds me of David Hume describes theology as, uh, I can't remember the exact quote, but it was a, a something along the lines of a bunch of, of sharp barbs erected to hide their weaknesses. Um, that they write this very boring word salady nonsense because all they're saying is, oh no, atheists. And that's kind of all it says, despite the fact there being 500 million words of it. Um, I don't want to be too hard on my theological colleagues, but do something else. It's not really academia. Um, it's, oh, I, I, my mum's sort of a Catholic, and I think she's one of those examples of she says she's a Catholic but she isn't, you know, <laughs> she kind of has some beads and she'll go to church once a year and she likes wine. And that's kind of all there is to it. Um, yeah, I, I've, this idea that atheism is the worst possible thing we can face right now would be hilarious, would it not be depressing? Um, but as I say, from my point of view, I don't care because they're losing. They're losing this fight and they can whinge and moan about it all they want. And what we'll do, the rest of us, and this includes the slightly more sensible religious people out there, is we'll worry about the actual, you know, problems and we'll try to solve those while they sit in a box going, oh, it isn't bad. Well, and that just shows the apologetics that we have been seeing over the past yeah. couple of decades. Meanwhile, all the arguments that, you know, atheists are able to make have been able to evolve, have been able to poke holes and yet as the arguments on from us tend to evolve they just keep on going back no because it i i have to be right because look we can we can trace back to this book and that's just not how things work um but helen you you had uh something you wanted to say well i just find this whole idea of them being like terrified of atheism like that like because it, it that article is a little bit of a word salad because it's just um there's a lot of words but you're not really saying anything you're just like as you were saying like atheism bad okay fine but like and they've tried to change their image the new pope was supposed to be this cool progressive pope you know and he was okay with gay people <laughs> you know good for you good for you and it just like yeah again oh but you, oh you still won't like gay people get married in the church oh okay you still think it's a sin oh okay well then you're not as progressive as you're claiming to be and it's just about saving face it's just about trying to be more palatable to the younger generation or even just because guess what old people are gay too there's just we're just everywhere it's just what it is and this constant apologetics, the constant trying to save face, it just gets, from my perspective, very exhausting. And I and I grew up in the church and I saw this happening over and over again. And as you were saying, Jason, we are trying to improve our arguments. We're, we're talking about like how to become a better human, like be a humanist. How do we take care of each other? You know, August pointed out, you know, we have bigger fish to fry <laughs> than worrying about our atheists getting more power, I guess. Do we have power? <laughs> <laughs> do we have the power of the we church? do as long as we we well no, we don't have the power of the church but we have power whether they want to admit it or not we do have power and we keep gaining every year but uh yeah. august uh what, what do you think yeah just a few more things here um i thought one very funny part of the article was that he said read in context the reader should have no doubt to what the fathers are referring and just that sentence made me chuckle because i was like yeah well 
so many people read the Bible and they come to widely and vastly different conclusions about what it says. So Mm -hmm. just blatantly stating, well, everyone should know what this means. No, that's not how that works in any section of life, but also especially in religion. Are you kidding me? That's that's where the most you have to read the context and it's up to interpretation. That's where all that comes from. And there are about as many religions. If you look at the exact beliefs of each person, there are about as many religions as there are people that are theists because everyone has slightly different variations of how they interpreted text. So I just thought it was really funny that he would say that. Um, I also do want to point out that as I was scrolling through the article, when I would get too bored, to be completely (laughs) honest, when I would read, I would go to the very end of it. And it just, it, it again made me, it made me chuckle that part of their, they have a laundry list of rules for commenting on their page, which is hilarious. But then this, I believe it was the second one was no attacking the church or her doctrines. Is your faith that like, is, is your faith that shallow? Is it that shaky that it can be destroyed by some trolls on the internet saying, ah, your church is bad. Like, what? Are you kidding me? I thought that was hilarious. It was just, it was, I couldn't believe that this was not some sort of satire. It honestly, I wanted to look for, is this the onion somewhere? (laughs) Um, I also hate this trope that they always talk about, which is, I saw them put atheist comma agnostics and a whole other, you know, non-believers, et cetera. And I'm like, Those aren't mutually exclusive. Most of us, dare I say most of us, or at least most of the people I've come across are called agnostic atheists. Like that's what I would call myself. I'm an agnostic atheist. I'm pretty sure there's not a God. I've not been convinced there's a God, but I can't say that one just doesn't exist. I'm not going to take a hard position on it, but you know, I just, I hate when they do that BS of, you know, oh, they're the agnostics. They just don't know. No, that's not really how that works. It's belief versus knowledge. So you should probably figure that out. Um, but Dr. Rich, I think you had something. Yeah. Um, if there's that following on from that, they are the difference between agnostics and atheist. Uh, this guy, uh, should know that, you know, he's not just some commentator who's phoning up somebody who believes who's phoning up the atheist experience to, um, shout at people. He is a PhD holder who works in the university and teaches, uh, theology. He absolutely knows what agnosticism is and what atheism is. Um, and what Promethean uh, humanism is, which I didn't know. It's quite interesting, Promethean humanism. Look it up. Um, We should all have fire. Um, Yeah, terrible, uh, terrible bit of writing and thinking from a supposed person of doctorates, person of letters. Awful. So I just want to mention one last thing about this uh, particular article, and it's that it actually had a comment section as well. <laughs> and I jumped down there and, and there isn't a lot of comments. There was only like a 20 something comments there, but I did want to highlight a couple of them. The first comment that I saw on there is uh, <laughs> it's, it, we hear it all the time. What evidence do atheists provide to support their belief that only the physical universe exists? And you know, I, I, I laugh at this. And, and the first thing I put on there is like, um, I guess we could look at the trees, right? You know, the, the trees are Where's there. Where's the, the burden are, of proof? The trees are physically there. Um, but, you know, yeah, we can only we can only assume that what we see, what we touch, what we can test is the physical. But we don't have a test for the non-physical beyond what is created in our minds. Like I believe that New York exists because I can go there. I have been there. I can go there again if I really wanted to, but Iron Man is not going to give me a scholarship anytime soon. And he, the other well, comment I wanted him, to, Jason. to, right. <laughs> you just got to believe in your heart. I, I, I just, I just don't, I, just don't have that kind of faith. I just yeah. don't. <laughs> Do the sign of the arc reactor. And, and the second one I wanted to, the second one I wanted to point out was, uh, uh, has the church 
gotten closer to Judas or to Jesus. And I'm just like, bro, really? That, that, that That's all I got for that. So let's go ahead and, and wrap this up. This has been a really great episode. I am so glad that all of you could have joined me here. Um, so, and all of you out there in, in YouTube, you know, you can join us on our fan media, our fan social media outlets. Uh, you can find most of the nonprofits hosts at the Atheist Community of Discord uh, by going to tiny.cc slash ACD Discord. Or you can join us on Facebook. Like I said, uh, every Friday I will be posting the uh, show notes uh, or the articles ahead of time at tiny.cc slash FBNP. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so by becoming a patron at tiny.cc slash Patreon NP. And if you happen to find yourself shopping at Amazon, you can support the Atheist Community of Austin by shopping at smile.amazon.com and selecting the Atheist Community of Austin as the beneficiary. Uh, be sure to use that link to help out the ACA. We definitely appreciate it. Um, I'm doing my part. I've got a massive computer build that is definitely going to be mostly Amazon purchased, and uh, they're definitely going to be getting some money back from that one. We also value your feedback. Tell us what you like, what you don't like, down in the comments there. Uh, I will be responding to almost all the comments. I try to do so within the first seven days, uh, but you can also uh, email us at nonprofits at atheist-community.com. Also visit the Atheist Community of Austin's official website at atheist-community.org. You can get the latest on what is happening and feel free to contact the ACA directly at tv at atheist-community.org. Uh, so again, August, Dr. Rich, Helen, thank you so much for being here. This has been a, a blast, a great time. And... Let's go ahead and just get some uh, some quick final thoughts. Um, okay, never mind. <laughs> I'm getting a uh, I'm getting a word from the producer saying okay. <laughs> Anyways, um, so to all of us here and to all of you out there, uh, thank you for tuning in, and we will see you next time. Watch Talk Heathen live Sundays at 1 p.m. Central. Visit tiny.cc slash YTTH and call into the show at 512-991-9242 or connect to the show online at tiny.cc slash call TH.